So my last video showed that the Quest 2 with virtual desktop is now my headset of choice over the Vive Pro wireless for room scale games. Well the same now is true for sim racing games here in my rig. Until the Reverb G2 arrives, this is my headset of choice. Today I'm going to show just how well it runs sim racing games from the PC wirelessly over virtual desktop and how easy is it to jump into a game and get going. Now I'm going to try and show you from the get go getting it up and running so bear with me I've not really done this before capturing from the quest etc so we'll see how it goes so right now nothing's running no games are running or whatnot I've just got the headset here controllers on my lap so let me just change here to hopefully capturing the quest so I'll put this on my head yep so you should be capturing the quest you're seeing what I'm seeing so it's going to center my view right so that's it so we're in the quest now that's all i've done i'm going to just click virtual desktop that loads up yep brilliant then i'm going to click launch steam vr there we are we're already in steam vr and last but not least, all time over listed two. And there we go. And this is where I'm now going to click to a different capture thing on that one. And I'm just going to turn off side quest and the uh, quest capture thing because that's just going to be a waste of performance or whatnot. So. You should be seeing what I'm seeing in VR, typical Steam VR capture. Let's get rid of these controllers out of the way. So it's just a few clicks and I'm in. No cables. Right, I'm going to jump into a race. Alright, uh, settings are pretty high, they're what I've always kept on the Vive Pro. Uh, 20 car grid I believe and when it gets going let me just check that audio and stuff's going on fine yep looks like it okay let's put these down so I can actually hear what's going on see so easy that was My talking and driving skills aren't the best, but I'll do what I can. So let's talk about setup, you see. Now, a lot of people are talking about using a Wi-Fi 6 router for this. I got one. I've since sold it. It made no difference, no benefit over my free Vodafone ISP router, which, you know, bog standard router, which works great. And here's the surprising thing, right? That router is actually in another room and I'm still getting decent performance here so that router is going through a wall basically through the desk and monitor I've got my G9 that's between me and it and then I've got another monitor here right next to me so all this stuff but the signal is obviously pretty decent I've got a latency down there of try not crash around the 30 latency of about 30 which to me is pretty awesome and look at this as I said I've got OBS running so I know that's a hit because I've played this on better settings than now with remarkable performance now actually in virtual desktop I've got the bit rate at 90 and I've got the um, the quality le level or whatever, whatever it is that basically sets a resolution of, you know, you've got low, medium or high. I've got it at medium now. And medium at 100% super sampling in Steam VR is basically the same or as near as damn it as the Vive Pro at 100%. 
So it's basically now the same resolution as the Vive Pro, but with a much, much less screen door effect. Much less. So the picture quality is better. Okay, I don't have the OLEDs black. The, the black OLED. Um, the black levels of OLED, but to be honest, I don't elect to race in at night too often, and when I do, it's actually still awesome anyway, to be quite frank with you. So this is undoubtedly a better picture than the Vive Pro. Now when I'm not capturing on OBS, I have actually put it up to high, and it ran just surprisingly well, ran really well. And that is on quite a big jump in resolution. Quite a big jump over the Vive Pro. But for the purposes of capturing video here, I have just put it down to medium. Now, as for frame rate, now the Quest 2 typically is 72, as we know. But over the virtual desktop, you can up that. I think you can have 60, 72, 80, or 90. A lot of people just want to put it at 90. And. You could fiddle about with that for your personal preference. Perhaps put that to 90, keep the resolution medium, or even go low. Still looks great. Um, whatever, you can fiddle with the settings to get what's right for you. For me, personally, I seem to be keeping it at 72. I'm, I'm not susceptible, really, to um, the change in between 72 and 90. I know a lot of people say they can notice it, and perhaps on the index it jumped to 144, or maybe I would notice that, but 72 and 90, no, I just prefer to get the performance. So as I say, I get the latency in virtual desktop, it's about 30, which is more than enough. Obviously the lower the better. But yeah. This is <laughs> this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. I'm not missing having a cable at all. Right now, as of now, playing this, sitting here, this is better than if I had my Vive Pro on my head, cabled. Which is right next to me. I'm just not using it, it's no point. Uh, I've got the motion platform off at the moment just to try and give a more accurate representation of performance because as I'm getting jolted about that can give a false impression of um, you know lag and stuttering etc but another bonus is that with the motion platform on it does use motion compensation so it knows the motion platform knows where my head is and compensates. Your head isn't out the window when you're leaning to the left or right. So that all works perfectly. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. There's not really a lot to this vid. I just wanted to demonstrate. To actually get in is just a case of clicking virtual desktop. Then loading your sim of choice. Um, yeah, I've played other sims, iRacing work fine, um, Assetto Corsa, uh, one thing I found on Assetto Corsa, which I know someone else had a problem with, currently, unless I've done something wrong, because I'm going through a fresh install at the moment, um, when using this headset, I was having some control issues. Maybe it was coincidental, I don't know. There's no reason it shouldn't just work perfectly like all the other sims have, I've tried. But look at this. It's just running amazing. You know, the stipulation is obviously have a 5 gigahertz router, which we've pretty much all got now. If you go into your settings, You'll be able to create a 5 gigahertz separate SSID. 
my quest is the only thing connected. And yeah, the recommendation is to have it in the same room. But not only is mine not in the same room, there's a lot of stuff, electronic stuff, between... You know, a straight line between me and the router. It's still working brilliant. Of course, the benefit is, as well, you can just keep the headset on at all times. So, for a set of course, for example, or I racing, you can just come out the race, then actually look at your desktop and control it with your controllers or the mouse, whatever you want. But you could just use your VR controllers. But yeah, so you don't even have to take the headset off. I'm not really watching what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm enjoying this um, latest object, uh, update to Automobilista 2, the GT3 cars. I haven't used them as much as I want to yet. And the Nürburgring, obviously. I think I think they've got the AI. Uh, I've got the AI at 100 um, skill or whatever it is, and 50. Uh, ooh, 50 aggression. Their behaviour is a lot better now. I have to say that. But yeah, the detail in these cars is immense, and they sound good. And a lot of people have said. <sighs> What's the point? We don't need the Nordschleife, Nürburgring, GT3 cars. We've got enough of them in Sims. Well, my argument is, to be quite honest with you, as a VR user, <laughs> if I can just stick to AMS2 as much as possible, the, you know, the happier I'll be. I want everything in this. Now, the other Sims are great. Obviously, iRacing's a separate entity for online. But to be honest with you, how this performance in, performs in VR and all, I just really want to just stick to this as much as I can now. Feels good, looks good, performs great. Well, I haven't spun out while talking, and I've just kept my position. <laughs> I have to say the the biggest difference is the screen door effect because obviously the graphics are the same but the lack of screen door it just gives a quite a big jump in immersion in realism more than ever do I feel like I'm there now so it gets me even more excited for the G2. Yeah, and like I said in my last video, if you've done this, if you're wirelessly doing PC games, room scale games, sim racing games, whatever, that was, sorry, that was my bad. And it's just not performing for you, then it's you, it's you or your equipment. Because right here and now I'm proving that it's more than playable. It's nigh on perfect here. Cool. You know, I could, I, you, there's there's no downside here at the moment. I've not had any issues here. The performance is amazing. I'm having no no stutters. No reprojection going on. It's running smooth as silk. And looking amazing. I assume race is over. And we're on a cooldown lap, are we? Not been paying any attention. I love the look of this Porsche with these, this livery here. Yeah, cooldown lap active. 
I wish actually the HUD, when you have no HUD, it wasn't 100% no HUD. At least tell you the race is over and uh, tell you when you've got your pit limiter on. But anyway, the race is over, let's pull in. So, yeah, that was it. I only wanted to do a quick video. It's probably already longer than I meant it to be. Just to show how quick and easy it is to jump in with the controllers. Couple of clicks, you're in the game. And it performed brilliantly. Honestly, really good. Anyway, yeah, so that'll do it for now. Any questions, any comments, just drop them below and I'll do my best to respond. But yeah, that'll do it for now. I'll catch you later. Cheers.